So good evening everyone I hope I am audible and visible to all of you Okay so today is the second session of the dermatology on let's crack neat pg the youtube channel of an academy now today we will start our discussion with a very very important topic and that is basement membrane you get a lot of questions from this topic that is basement membrane and that is why i request everyone to please go through these topics yesterday we did a topic which is called as basics of dermatology and today we will have something called as basement membrane please give me a thumbs up all of you if i am audible to you and my audio video is clear please give me a thumbs up all of you those who are listening to my class now before starting the session little bit about myself i am dr cheshta agarwal your neat pg educator on an academy and i have myself got all india rank 261 in my neat pg examination so i'll give you all the tips and tricks to crack your neat pg okay so welcome everyone welcome to the sessions now what is this an academy and how to download this an academy this is the india's best online platform for the preparation of neat pg now how to download it you have to go through you have to search for the an academy learning app on your app store you have to download or you have to install the app now after installation you have to choose neat pg as your topic and then you have to select the mode of subscription there are two types of subscriptions which are available one is plus subscription and another one is iconic now plus gives you access to an academy which give you access to live classes live test quizzes batch courses as well as structured schedules so you can access everything live also and if you are not able to attend anything live you can go through the recorded sessions as well that is the advantage of plus subscription what is iconic subscription it gives you access to online two platforms that is the best learning platform one is an academy and another is prep ladder the additional advantage of prep ladder is that it gives you the recorded videos the lectures question bank series available to you all the time so both of these are the type of subscription which are available for all of you now for iconic subscription you can go ahead with the one year subscription and this is best for next 2022 preparation so please go through the uh, neat pg subscription with iconic if you have the 2022 preparation going on and if you use my referral code cheshta10 you will get additional discount so the subscription which is initially of 55000 rupees after using my referral code cheshta10 you will get the same subscription of 49500 rupees so please go through these kind of subscription for plus you have advantage of 1 month 3 months 6 months 12 months if you are planning for your neat pg 2021 i will request you to get only the one month subscription which is sufficient for you because nowadays we are going on lot of new courses on an academy so please get through an academy subscription similarly if you use my referral code that is cheshta10 the course which was of 5000 rupees you will get discount and you will get it in 4500 rupees okay so that is all about the subscriptions please give me a thumbs up so that i can start with the today session everyone give me a thumbs up all, all of you okay so this is the first question of the today session a very very important topic that is the structure which you should know about the basement membrane please answer this question what are the component of lamina lucida laminin bp230 bp180 or both a and c so can anybody answer this question monica anybody else want to answer this question what which is the component of lamina lucida anyone can answer this question for me so i think uh, till now nobody have answered this question so before telling you the answer you should know how does the normal skin looks like so i think you know that skin is made up of three component you have epidermis which is present above you have dermis which is present just below the epidermis and you have a fat cell layer which is present just below the dermis which is called as hypodermis 
और सब क्यूटिस आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन एपिडर्मिस डर्मिस एंड सब क्यूटिस दीज आर थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ स्किन नाउ एट द जंक्शन ऑफ वन सेकेंड आई चेंज द पेन फॉर यू so at the junction of basement membrane or uh, at the junction of epidermis and dermis you have a structure which is called as basement membrane now basement membrane is made up of two component one is lamina lucida and the second one or the deeper one is called as lamina densa now why it is called as lamina densa because if you look it under the microscope under the electron microscope lamina densa is more dense when you compare it with that of lamina lucida now the question is what are the components of lamina lucida please remember lamina lucida is made up of three components these are laminin 5 bp 180 which is also called as bp antigen 2 and third is alpha 6 beta 4 integrin so these are the component of lamina lucida and what is the component of lamina densa can anybody answer this question can monica you answer this question anyone so please remember the component of lamina densa is collagen 4 so please remember this point this is very very important for all of you the lamina densa is made up of collagen 4 while lamina lucida is made up of laminin 5 bp180 alpha 6 beta 4 integrin all of them understood this point please give me a thumbs up if this question is clear so the answer here becomes both a and b so basement membrane is made up of two component lamina lucida and lamina densa lamina lucida is laminin 5 bp180 alpha 6 beta 4 integrin while lamina densa is collagen 4 now this is what i have already explained moving to the next question arrange the following structure in the skin in order of top to bottom please answer this question all of you arrange the following structure from top to bottom please answer this question all of you what is the correct answer of this question arrange the following structure of skin in order from top to bottom from most superficial to the deepest one which of the following is the correct statement can anybody answer this question for me monica anybody else can answer this question monica sayed can anybody answer this question arrange the following structure in skin in the order of top to bottom from most superficial to deepest one very nice dr swati so we have one answer and that is absolutely right now this is a very important question i hope i have discussed this question i think day before yesterday also now what are the component please remember you have three structures which is very important and that is called as basement membrane zone basement membrane zone what is basement membrane zone it is made up of three structure stratum basale which is the lower most layer of epidermis the second which is the second component of the basement membrane uh, the basement membrane zone is the basement membrane itself and the third component is the superficial part of the dermis which is made up of the collagen fiber please remember that basement membrane zone is made up of three component stratum basale cell basement membrane and the part of uh, the superficial part of the dermis which is made up of collagen 7 so what is this this is collagen 7 the second part is the basement membrane lamina lucida lamina densa and the superficial most part is stratum basale now you have to arrange the structure in the sequence so the location of the desmoglein is here it attaches the two cells of the epidermis so it is a glue which attach the keratinocytes to itself so this is called as desmoglein or desmosome 
Now, what is hemidesmosome? It is present at the lower part of the stratum basal cell, at the basal layer. So, this is the hemidesmosome. Lamina lucida, we have already discussed, it is made up of laminin, BP180 and alpha-6 beta-4 integrin. Lamina lucida is made up of collagen-4. And collagen 7 is present just below the basement membrane. So, Monica and Swati, I hope you can easily make out what is the sequence here from most superficial to deep. It is the desmoglein, then it is the hemidesmosome, then laminin and then it is collagen 4. Please give me a thumbs up if you understood the sequence. First is desmoglein, then hemidesmosome, then laminin and then collagen 7. So, the option becomes option number 4 that is 1, 2, 4 and 3. Okay. So, where is BP-230 present? So, Dr. Swati is asking where is BP-230 present? Please remember Dr. Swati, BP-230 is nothing but component of hemidesmosome. So, hemidesmosome is made up of BP-230 and plectin. Understood? Please say yes if you understood Swati. This is very important to understand that BP-280 is nothing but component of hemidesmosome itself. Chalo. So, this question is also clear. I hope this is a very easy question and you all are able to solve this question. So, this is the superficial part is the epidermis and the lowermost part is the dermis and the structure which is present here that is in between the dermis and epidermis, this is the basement membrane. So, this is the structure to show you that. And that is the pictorial representation of the basement membrane zone. You have stratum basal cells which are present here. Then this is the basement membrane and these are the collagen 7 which are present in the lamina tensa. Okay. So, I think this is a clear uh, picture here. Now, please answer the next question. Which of the following is a sub-epidermal disease? Now, this is a question which usually you get in association with vesiculobullous disorders. So, can you answer this question? Monika, Swati, anyone can answer this question. Which of the following is a sub-epidermal disease? Darius disease, bullous impetigo, pemphigus foliaceus or bullous pemphigoid. Very nice. So, I am getting the answers from the students. What about you, uh, Swati, uh, Sayad? What about you? What is the answer of this question? I want everyone to try answering this question. If you are wrong, no worries. You can ask me the questions. I can explain this to you. So, which of the following is the sub-epidermal disease? Darius disease, bullous impetigo, pemphigus foliaceus or bullous pemphigoid? Yes, please remember the sub-epidermal disease. The only example here is bullous pemphigoid. This is a very, very important question and Dr. Swati, it is not pemphigus foliaceous. Please remember, you have two types of vesiculobullous disorders. One is intraepidermal, where you have cleft which is present inside the epidermis and the second one is subepidermal. So, you have intraepidermal cleft, you have subepidermal cleft. Intraepidermal is further divided into two groups. Intraepidermal is divided into subcorneal and suprabasal. Now, what do you mean by subcorneal or suprabasal? In subcorneal, the level of split is just below the stratum corneum. But in suprabasal, the level of cleft is just above the stratum basal layer. Now, what are the examples of these disease? So, I will write it with a red pen. Subcorneal example is pemphigus foliaceous. Even in staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome and in bullous impetigo. In all these three, you will see subcorneal split. But in suprabasal, the example becomes pemphigus vulgaris, haley haley disease, and Darius disease. So, these three are the examples of sub suprabasal cleft or just above the stratum basal. Is that clear to all of you? So, the only example which presents with the sub epidermal disease here is bullous pemphigoid. Please give me a thumbs up, Dr. Swati and Monica, if you understood this. This is a very, very important question. 
please give me a thumbs up if you understood this important point here understood everyone very nice so which of the following is sub epidermal so the answer becomes bullous pemphigoid because in bullous pemphigoid you have auto antibodies against the component of hemidesmosome as well as lamina lucida and both of them are the component of basement membrane zone and that is why they will form a sub epidermal cleft okay so i think this question is clear this is what i was trying to explain you that when you have subcorneal split it is pemphigus foliaceus for supra basal it is pemphigus vulgaris okay now moving to the next question please answer this question monica and swati intraepidermal bullae are seen in pemphigoid pemphigus dermatitis apetiformis or pemphigoid gestationalis in which condition you will see intra epidermal bullae can anybody answer this question for me so just uh, recollect your memory or whatever i have explained in the previous question you can easily solve this intra epidermal bullae are seen in pemphigoid pemphigus dermatitis apetiformis or pemphigoid gestationalis anyone very nice uh, i can see many of you with the answers so intra epidermal bullae it is seen in the patients of pemphigus both pemphigus foliaceus and pemphigus vulgaris both of them are present inside the epidermis but if pemphigoid dermatitis apetiformis as well as in pemphigoid gestationalis you will see sub epidermal cleft so what are the example of sub epidermal uh, clefting in which vesicular bullous disorder you will see sub epidermal cleft the answer becomes bullous pemphigoid bullous pemphigoid which is also called as pemphigoid then pemphigoid gestationalis pemphigoid gestationalis in dermatitis herpetiformis dermatitis herpetiformis and in case of iga pemphigoid please remember these disorders which presents with sub epidermal clefting i hope this is clear to all of you please try to remember this this is a very very important question related to the basement membrane zone very very important question related to the basement membrane zone now moving to the next question i want everyone swati monica sayed to answer this question on mild mechanical trauma the following lesions evolve in a 24 year old patient the lesions form erosions and it heals without scar formation which protein is defective in this patient so pemphigoid gestationalis resolve its own so yes uh, dr swati after pregnancy you can see spontaneous resolution in the patients of pemphigoid gestationalis but there is a high risk of recurrence of pemphigoid gestationalis in the subsequent pregnancy okay so it doesn't mean that patient is completely cured in the subsequent pregnancy when the level of estrogen and progesterone increases you can get pemphigoid gestationalis again is that clear please give me a thumbs up or say yes if you understood this point okay now please try to answer this question anyone on mild mechanical trauma uh, i think uh, the image is not visible so i'll just move the image for all of you so now i think you can easily uh, look at the image please try to answer this question now on mechanical trauma the following lesions involved in a 24 year old patient so you can see there is a mild erosion which is seen over the plantar aspect of the patient okay so what is this disease on the plantar aspect this is what is seen to you very nice uh, very nice so this is a classical case of mechanobullous disorders now what are mechanobullous disorders mechanobullous disorders are those disorders which occurs secondary to the mechanical trauma so it is trauma induced so whenever patient gets trauma or whenever patient gets some lateral force there is development of bulla or vesicles at the site now what is the reason behind this the reason is in these individual 
there is congenital deficiency of one of the component of either epidermis or dermis so you have congenital deficiency of epidermis or dermis depending upon the component which is deficient we have divided mechanobullous disorder into three broad groups these are epidermolysis bullosa simplex epidermolysis bullosa junctional and epidermolysis bullosa dystrophica now what is this complicated diagram showing you i will explain this to you very easily in epidermolysis bullosa simplex you have defect in the stratum basal cell inside the keratinocytes there is keratin intermediate filament and these keratin intermediate filaments are present in pairs the one which is present in the stratum basal is keratin 5 and 14 so what happens in epidermolysis bullosa simplex keratin 5 14 is absent so the cells are very loose there is no tensile strength in these cells at the level of stratum basal so whenever you have mechanical pressure the cells will easily torn off and this will give rise to an intra epidermal or a basal cleft intra epidermal or at the level of stratum basal you will see the clefting i hope this is clear to everyone please say yes if you understood this point all of you now in eb junctional you have defect of laminin 5 which is component of lamina lucida that is basement membrane so in epidermolysis bullosa junctional you will have sub epidermal cleft at the level of basement membrane and epidermolysis bullosa dystrophica you have defect of collagen 7 you have defect of collagen 7 so here also you will have sub epidermal clefting okay so this is very very important point now how to remember that in eb simplex you have intra epidermal but eb dystrophic you have sub epidermal so the very easy way to remember this is s of simplex s of superficial so you have superficial cleft in the patients of eb simplex but in the patient of eb dystrophic you have deep clefting so eb dystrophic and deep for eb dystrophic so try to remember it like this this is very important to remember the sequence as well as the gene defect now another point which is very important is that eb simplex it occurs in the adult life but eb junctional and eb dystrophic occurs immediately at the time of birth so now if you see this question on mechanical trauma patient is developing a vesicle over the lower limb but the age of the patient is adult that is 24 year old male so a 24 year old male will present with a trauma induced blister it means that you are dealing with epidermolysis bullosa simplex in which you have keratin 514 defect understood this point swati monica please give me a thumbs up if you understood this point a very very important question for you to understand that eb simplex will present in the adult life and that is why here you have the answer that is eb simplex while eb junctional and dystrophic presents in since birth so you will see the presence of vesicles bullae at the site of trauma since birth so i think we are done with the question and this was the last question which we have to cover today So I hope you have enjoyed the today's class. This was a very brief class, uh, only a twenty-minute session. Tomorrow also will come up with another great sessions. I welcome everyone tomorrow. If you enjoy my classes, I request you to please subscribe to An Academy. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel that is Let's Crack Neat PG. Please don't forget to press the bell icon so that whenever my uh, YouTube videos will come, you will get the notification. and you have to give me a thumbs up after seeing the video so please everyone give me a thumbs up after the end of the video so good night all of you all the best take care and